Ah, don't worry about this. Bocce ball injury. Anyway, we're looking at 240.4b. Often goes by the nickname the Roundup Rule. And it's one of those permissive rules to protect conductors that are allowed in the subsections of dot four. So here I have some ampacities of copper conductors from table 310.16. And I picked the 75 degrees Celsius rating because in our commercial and industrial work, most of our newer equipment is rated for at least 75 degrees. However, always be careful in case you need to use a lower ampacity from the 60 degree column. Say you're running Romex, NM cable, UF cable, connecting to something that's only rated for 60 degrees Celsius. Or if you're using small conductors, 240.4D, D as in Dave, for small conductors, has specific restrictions on the size of overcurrent devices for wire sizes number 10 and smaller. And over here, from table 240.6A, I have the NEC dictated standard sizes of fuses and circuit breakers. It doesn't state it specifically, but they're for 1000 volts and less. And also in the written section, it states that I can use non-standard sizes. However, all the rules are based on standard sizes. So that's what I put here. Now you might think, and correctly so, that a conductor should have an ampacity that's equal to or greater than the device that is protecting the conductor. And that's a good basic understanding. We want to think that way. However, this is a permissive rule and it allows us at times to protect a conductor whose ampacity after any derating, any adjustments or corrections, if the conductor's ampacity comes in in between two standard size overcurrent devices, I can protect this conductor with the next bigger size. What would be a couple of benefits? Well, for starters, I could get my full ampacity out of this conductor. Copper is expensive. I don't want to have to buy more copper than I need to. And also, I could get a little extra wiggle room to avoid nuisance tripping. Depending on what my load's characteristics are, that could be a benefit. But you're looking at this and you're probably asking, if I have this conductor protected by an overcurrent device with a higher rating, what stops this conductor from being overloaded? And that, my friends, is the key to understanding this provision properly. The conductor can be protected by the next bigger size, but we are not allowed to. We cannot run more amps on this conductor than its rating. So that's our job as electricians when we make installations to know what's connected to our conductors, to make sure everything's sized adequately. And if I go into an existing facility to add a load, I don't just find the closest circuit, connect it up, cross my fingers, hope it works. No, I analyze the whole circuit from overcurrent device to conductor to connected loads to see if there is room on that conductor to add some more amps for the new load. Or do I need to run a new circuit out there for it? Others might say that the code is somewhat conservative in its ampacities, and it may be. However, that's not license for me to bend or break rules. No, it's incentive for me to find these permissive rules or exceptions in the code and understand why they are allowed. Now to use this rule, there are three conditions and all three need to be met. Condition number one states that if the conductor is being used as a branch circuit for multiple receptacles for cord and plug connected portable loads, I cannot use this provision. And what that does is it gets us to this concept of control. How do we control how many amps are on the conductor? Because you see what that's doing? 
If I have a bunch of receptacles that portable equipment is connected into, any member of the public can come along who doesn't understand our trade and our rules, can come along and start moving equipment, adding extra ones, moving things in and out, and they could unwittingly overload the conductor. So we cannot do that. If the equipment is fixed in place or it's hardwired, okay, no problem. But if I have receptacles for portable, I'm limited to one. I cannot have multiple. And there, the receptacle would have a shape based on its amperage. Condition number two is largely what we've been talking about here. And it tells me that if a conductor's ampacity corresponds to or exactly matches an overcurrent device standard size, then that's what I'm stuck with. That would be the max for this number three. However, if that conductor's ampacity, like I said earlier, after any derating, comes in in between, it does not correspond to a standard size, then I can protect it with the next bigger. So what do you think for the number one? Rated at 130 amps comes in in between two standard sizes. So yeah, I can protect this with the 150 amp breaker. There's no standard sizes between these two. But remember that I cannot put more than 130 amps of calculated load on this conductor. And the one aught, what do you think? 150 amps is its rating? Exactly matches the overcurrent device size. So that's where I'm stuck for that one. Now the first two lines of condition number two are easy to read. Lines three and four will make more sense after you learn the types and characteristics of fuses and circuit breakers. But in a nutshell, some of these devices have adjustable ampacity ratings on them. And what we're trying to avoid is a scenario where I have a conductor protected by the next baker, but someone could just turn that little adjustment and make it way higher. We're trying to avoid that. Condition number three says I can use this provision up to and including 800 amps, but not above. Incidentally, that pretty much says the same thing as 240.4C says as you read down through the various subsections. Best reason for that that I've heard is that if you look at this table over here at 800 amps and larger standard sizes, the gaps increase 200, 400, 500, even a thousand amps. And that would just be too much of a gap between the conductor's ability and the overcurrent device. So as an additional remark, even though this is a general use permissive rule, there are a couple specific circumstances where we cannot use this rule, okay? If I look right here, 240.21B for tap conductors, I cannot use this rule. And C for transformer secondaries, I'm not allowed to use this rule. I can use this rule for transformer primary conductors, but just not on the secondary side. So there you have it. A general use permissive rule. So as long as you meet all three conditions and you don't violate any of the restrictions in the subsections of dot four or a specific restriction in the code, you should be good to go. Thank you.